Well, that was pretty cool. Medium-sized owl fly across the road here on Nichols Lake Road. I thought, uh, too small for a great gray. And it was a barred owl. And they get hungry midwinter and they start hunting more in the daytime. And then a flock of white-winged crossbills came by. They've been really scarce this winter. And for a good reason, there's a lot of cone crop up in the Canadian boreal forest. So they're fat and happy up there. Yeah, good way to start the morning. My goal today is mostly Martin video. So I'm gonna go to the Admiral Road Feeders where there's been up to four individuals because Clinton and I are working on a, a weasel edition of Clinton's Critters, yeah. So before winter ends, we'll have that out. And on my way up to the Admiral Road feeders, I ran across this rig. Wow, pretty cool. People could stand up and be covered and shoot right out of the van. It was a photo expedition company out of Colorado. They were having a blast. Then I spotted the Pine Martin coming in. Yep, there he is. And yeah, then we all got serious and the conversation quieted down. And we started shooting. Everybody was very respectful, stayed on the far side of the road, and the Martin put on a show. He got some peanut butter, he was looking around, he was oh quite a quite a leap there. But yeah, they're a member of the weasel family that can go up and down the tree limbs. Their hind legs can rotate 180 degrees so they can go down a tree as fast as they can go up a tree. And as you've probably heard, they're one of the few mammals that can chase down a red squirrel in the trees. And I, I believe it. They are extremely agile on the trunks of these trees. Well, the Martin showed and yeah, got some of the video I needed for the upcoming Clinton's Critters Weasels episode. It was fun chatting with people from all over. Bob from Ohio, Eric, who I've known online a long time. Just chatting with folks. It's one of the really cool things about hanging out in the Sag Zimbog. Just stumbled upon a great gray at 1242 p.m. here in Overton. So let's go see if we can get some more video. I got some slow motion of him off his perch, but uh, didn't seem to catch a vault. So let's go check it out. Well, that great gray didn't linger. Uh, I hadn't seen a car for like a half hour and then three appeared out of nowhere and it uh, didn't like the crowd. So I was staying a long ways back and I, I think they wanted a closer photo, but this, this great gray, he wanted his solitude today. All he has to do is fly like a hundred feet back and 
you'll never see anyone. Well, now it's a three owl day. This is the rare hybrid snowy great horned owl. Yeah, I bet you've never seen that. I see a lot of worked trees in this bog where the bark has been flaked off. That's sometimes a sign of a black-backed woodpecker, but hairy woodpeckers do it too. So I'm gonna see if we can uh, actually locate these guys. It sounds more like tapping than flaking, which would indicate hairy or even downy. Yeah, all hairies and downies. Just heard a black backed. I think it was over there. Or was it over there? All right, let's, <laughs> let's go check it out. Beautiful black spruce bog. And you know what? It's a little secret. We're gonna own it here in about a month. <laughs> and I am excited. Downy. Wolf tracks. And that way. Okay, this time I hear flaking instead of pecking. And nope, another hairy. So much for that theory. A flaking hairy. And what these hairies and blackbacks are doing is flaking the bark off to get at the eastern larch beetle grubs underneath the bark. And the eastern larch beetle is a native past, quote unquote, I'm doing quote marks. So the tamaracks are adapted to it. There's outbreaks. I don't know if it's every four years. Now with uh, changing climate, there are some theories that they, the larch beetles are able to reproduce twice in a season and so the problem's getting worse. Sad to see these tamaracks, the big old tamaracks die off, but the young ones are unaffected and they regrow really fast compared to black spruce. But we'll see what happens, what plays out here. It sure is good for the woodpeckers. <laughs> no blackback yet. Sure sign of recent workings, bark on top of the snow. Okay. <laughs> the ditch isn't frozen yet. <laughs> Good thing I was wearing rain pants. Woo, that was refreshing. Certainly heard of black backed, but after an hour of bushwhacking, nada. A lot of hairies, a lot of hairies. And then falling through the uh, ice into the ditch, my left foot is soaked. <laughs> the camera got wet, but it'll be fine. Sometimes you just gotta go for it. Did get turned around in there too, but that's common. Just pointed my compass to south and knew I would hit the road. Gray Fox just ran across the road. It's been a long time since I've seen a gray fox. We've got a crazy tolerant shrike here with the Zabin feeders. And I'm gonna sit here and try and get some video of this guy. I guess, according to the owners, he's plucked four or five voles in the last two days from their, below their feeders. <laughs> so let's see if we can get some footage. This shrike, this shrike at the Zabin feeders. Wow, hyper spastic, 
totally tolerant. <laughs> been flying all over. He'll rarely sit on a perch for more than a few seconds. Haven't seen him catch anything yet. He's dropped down a couple times, but uh, no voles. The birds kind of get mildly upset, but they don't leave. They just kind of hang around. Well, that was mega quick. <laughs> uh, tried for the second time today for that hawk owl over by the Burns greenhouse. And there were cars there, which means the bird was there. And it was. It's looking the other way and the spruces. He was there about two seconds and flew. And that's okay. Uh, evidently, it's, it's finding plenty of voles out there in that far field where you need a scope to see it. But it makes enough trips close to the road so people are you know, happy. Here at Bob Russell Bog Walk, some visitors reported a black bag woodpecker here a few days ago. So I thought, huh, I'll try it, although I'm here a little late. Woodpeckers go to bed a little early. No use looking at the suet feeders for black bag woodpecker. They are not known to eat suet. I have never ever seen one at a suet feeder. They are specialized on beetle larvae below the bark of trees. Surrounded by three different hairy woodpeckers. They are more tap, 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 and often higher up, but no blackbacks. Yet another hairy. And a little while later, over on McDavitt, Ran into some eye-level fluff balls, ruffed grouse, all poofed out towards the end of the day, eating, looks like hazel catkins, and uh, maybe they're young birch. But, uh, yeah, fattening up before they, normally they just, uh, at dusk, plop into the snow, burrow down into the deep snow, and sleep the night away. It can be, you know around freezing two feet under the snow and it might be 30 40 below zero above the snow so that's like a 70 80 degree difference in temperature but not that much snow this winter so good luck buddy superstar bird of the day for me i'm gonna give it to that barred owl i know i saw a great gray but that barred owl was in just beautiful snowy landscape yeah you don't see them in the daytime that often and superstar mammal, of course, pine martin number one. Was it pine martin number two, three, or four? I don't know. Ah, superstar bird of today. I'm gonna give it to Steve the Shrike. I don't, I don't know. I'm gonna call him Steve. Super tame, or tolerant, I should say. Super tolerant, or just didn't care about us humans. Hoping to get him catch a vole, but uh, not today. Don't forget about tiny bird art auction starting on the 25th. And check out some of these examples. We received over 120 pieces. Just stunning work. Check it out. Until then, keep your mucklucks in the snow or on a boardwalk and your eyes looking for blackback woodpeckers because obviously I can't find one for <laughs> to save my life. Oh, no, no, another hairy. Okay, take care. See you in the next episode of Virtually Live.